This is the Defenders podcast on TV Podcast Industries, and we're talking about Marvel Studios' Hawkeye Season 1 wrap-up. Can I ask you something? Yeah, sure. What do you think of Lady Hawk? Oh, yeah, that's terrible. Hawk Eve? No, it's worse. Damn, okay. Hawk shot. Like hot, like hot shot, but, but you know, Hawk. No. Lady Arrow? None of those. Okay, fine. Welcome back, fellow Defenders. Yes, this is TV Podcast Industries, and this is the Defenders Podcast. We're looking at the Season 1 wrap-up of Marvel Studios' Hawkeye. I am one of your hosts, John. I'm one of your hosts, Derek. And rounding out this bullseye-hitting trio, I am Chris. Yes. uh, Welcome back, fellow Defenders, indeed. Yes, we were supposed to be looking at the Marvel Studios Assembled look at the making of Hawkeye. Yeah. We thought it was out today. It was. And we we waited. <laughs> it went five past eight, then ten past eight, then quarter past eight. So we watched Boba Fett. And then at 12 o'clock, it was like still not there. So we, we decided that, look, we have to uh, wrap up Hawk, Hawkeye season one, especially with regards to the pub quiz for mm-hmm. all those defenders and quizzes who had written in with their answers but also because we got a huge amount of episode 6 feedback, which we weren't able to uh, read out uh, in time on our last discussion. So we've been holding out for this Marvel Assembled making of uh, of Hawkeye, and um, of course, unfortunately, it didn't materialize. It got lost in the... uh, the Enterprise's uh, sort of transporter, basically. <laughs> I was going to say it got lost wow. in the multiverse. It would have yeah, been that's, slightly more on brand. That's, that's it would thought. have, actually. I just think I didn't think about that. I, I think you're a bit excited because we heard today that uh, that Star Trek Picard Season 2 is coming out in uh, March, on March 2nd, which uh, yes. is the first time we've heard an actual release date, other than it's coming in February, which was the last release date we had. <laughs> <laughs> so February turns into March 2nd, as well, these things do. Uh, these days there's been loads of release dates uh just and certainly i think uh march is going to be uh pretty hectic with everything coming out then of course there was the big uh trailer teaser trailer for marvel's moon knight so uh yeah that was really 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 cool and of course lots of uh chit chat over on into the night uh the moon knight podcast of course with our friends uh over there so great stuff really enjoyed that loads yeah if you're excited for moon knight at all get yourself over and subscribe to into the night the moon knight podcast uh hosted by ray and by rebecca They've done a great job for about four years now, breaking down everything from individual comic issues to uh, cosplay that that uh, people have done to fan movies to everything. And I think they did three episodes this week, two of which made it to air, unfortunately, uh, about the teaser trailer and the trailer that have come out from Moon Knight. Um, it's going to be an exciting time for any Moon Knight fans. And if you're not a Moon Knight fan yet... Read some, read some of the issues. You're going to enjoy this character. And I think we're all pretty excited to be covering that when it comes out from the 31st of March. Um, yes. The first Can't wait to cover that. that. Yeah. 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 And then we also have Diabolical mm. in March as well. The animated <laughs> we do. Amazon led, Amazon studio led the boys spinoff, mm. which is done by each episode is a different writer of well known ilk. Be it Seth, apparently everyone from Seth Rogen to you name it, are uh, Kripke himself are all included and writing in these kind of other animated stories in yeah. the boys' universe. Um, the the trailer that dropped was a short clip from a ba- a baby's day out almost in the boys' universe where a baby with laser eyes is popping heads. Mm. 
Um, it's as gory as ever, and it's great. <laughs> it's very interesting. I'm not sure how long the uh, how long the episodes are going to be. It could be two minutes. Could be uh, could be thirty minutes. So uh, we don't know how we're going to be covering it on the podcast, or if we're going to be covering it on the podcast. Uh, that was a very quick clip, and and you're totally right, Chris. It was one of those ones where it came up as I was scrolling through Twitter, and I just saw this beautifully animated short which looked like something from uh the old warner brothers stuff um yeah really really reminded me of the anime x type style of, yeah. of animation and i was going oh I'll, I'll pause and have a look at this and then head starts to explode and i was going i hope um i hope not many kids look at this because it does look exactly as brutal oh, as yeah. you'd expect <laughs> it is going to be shocking irreverent and mm-hmm. Everything in between, I guess. Certainly given that we saw Billy Butcher's dog, Terra, licking his old Christmas puddings there as well. Yes. So, uh, yes, yes. Fact, no leftovers the, for Terra. Yeah, I think that's the actual poster uh, yep. before the show. Is, is <laughs> Absolutely. Image. So, yes. <laughs> Hilarious. Um, and, of course, we do still have to mention um, the, the Witcher as well. Yep. So we will be looking at the Witcher as well. Uh, slightly delayed uh, as we're, we're all catching up uh, with ourselves. Well, at least myself and Derek are. Um, I, I guess by March, uh, I can't use that as an excuse. No. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, yes, we will be uh, getting into uh, the Witcher as well towards the end of January uh, for season two, our season two coverage of yes. The Witcher. Yes. yes, that is our next podcast coming up uh, is The Witcher. Uh, last one then to mention, um, because we did do our big view forward of what's coming up in 2022 with absolutely zero dates, I think, for what's coming up. The one show that we did have a date for is uh, was Lord of the Rings, uh, or the Middle Earth show that's coming to uh, Amazon Prime. We knew it was coming on the 2nd of September and mentioned that, but it now has a name. They did a big name announcement and they even did a behind the scenes making of how they put the, how they made the name announcement because it was <laughs> all, all physically done. They poured a ring in gold and, and, and showed how it was made. Very cool. But it is called The Lord of the Rings the rings of power so uh first time that's been announced uh first time we've had confirmation really from amazon prime this is going to be called a lord of the rings show and not middle earth show so they obviously threw quite a bit of money at that to get that title i'd love to know in the making of the uh announcement of the the name for the show i'd love to see the catering element on that it'd be great (laughs) Um, (laughs) i'm sure it was massive (laughs) i guess it would be uh yeah lots of coffee and so on (laughs) yeah i will do a quick shout out uh before we move on to our final wrap-up for Hawkeye Season 1 and your feedback and, more importantly, our pub quiz. Just a quick shout out that uh, myself and John, for anyone who's read, we finished our Wheel of Time Season 1 coverage, um, but anyone who's read the books, specifically books 1 and 2, potentially even just books 1, 2 and 3, or all of their books, we uh, jumped on over to the Busting Blockbuster podcast with Matt Murdock. Yes. Um, and myself and John. And it is very spoilerific in that it, it is for book readers. What they did or didn't include, what we enjoyed about season one. And again, what they did or did not include about the book from the books. Um, strongly suggest jumping on over and giving it a check out just because myself and John were there, but also because it was a great podcast and these are great guys, especially Matt, who is a fellow defender. And is probably listening to this right now. Certainly is. You, fellow defenders, you may recall, Matt, he does the really, really fantastic, very, very interesting musical feedback that mm-hmm. we get in terms of around the different Marvel themes that, that come up on the TV and how they link to those, those thematic tunes that we've grown to love uh, from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So uh, you will definitely recognize his voice, and it was an absolutely fantastic chat. So definitely check that out. Yeah, they were covering uh, all of Wheel of Time over on Buster Blockbusters podcast throughout the same period. So I was able to listen to most of those because uh, Matt keeps the spoilers to the book spoiler covers and then got really disappointed because I wasn't able to be on the podcast with you guys. Oh, we got spoilerific. Really? Again, big warners spoiler flashing light this is spoilerific especially for the books as well like we got now to be fair i managed to get one non-spoiler spoiling topic around john to discuss it without spoiling john (laughs) that is how that's how spoilery we got i managed to like do mental and linguistic gymnastics to 
myself and Matt could have a conversation about something without spoiling John. Impressive. I was quite proud. Impressive. Well, that was quite good. I do remember that. But you also did spoil one or two things. But that's fine. That's fine. I don't mind. <laughs> I really, really don't mind. But let us get on with our Hawkeye wrap-up. And let's start with winning ways for our pub quiz. Mm-hmm. So let us head on over to the old uh, bar uh, grab a pint as we run through the questions that we set you uh, following each and every episode of season one's Hawkeye and then we will of course go to our electronic tombola that is Google uh, uh, to pull a number again the pub quiz isn't the pub quiz without all the entrants so a big thank you to everyone who chucked over their answers to mm-hmm. the questions each week and um, it was really good great response from our fellow defenders and fellow quizzes so here we go with episode one never meet your heroes the question what three things do clint barson's children want to do for christmas it was to make a gingerbread house a christmas movie marathon and to wear ugly Christmas jumpers. Mm. And I think we saw all of those throughout the season, yes, didn't we? Yes, we did. certainly did. For episode two, hide and seek, the question was, what is the number on the New York Fire Department helmet that Clint is wearing? The answer was 54. Yes, the age of Clint Barton. No, not the age of Clint Barton. He's not 54. <laughs> uh, he just feels like it after each fight. <laughs> I like it. I like it. From episode three, Echoes, the question is, what is the name of the auto repair business where Maya witnesses Ronan killing her father? That's Fat Man Auto Repair. We know by the end of the series that that was a reference to Kingpin. Um, so yes. as the owner of that business and uh, and the boss of her father. So uh, a nice little touch there. Yeah, great stuff. Episode four, partners, am I right? The question, two parts for two points. Indeed, a two-parter here. What is written on the side of the mug that Clint Barton is drinking from? And secondly, what nickname does Kate give Clint Barton? The answer to that on the mug was Thanos was right, mm. controversial, and the nickname was CB1. Terrible, terrible nickname, and we were joking, and we couldn't even talk about it because this was the question. We were joking uh, how surprising it was that all of the trailers that included uh, the mug in them, that uh, that included Clint Barton drinking out of the mug, had actually taken Thanos was right out of that uh, to save the joke for the episode. <laughs> Quite funny. Next up on episode five which was called Ronan, we had the following question. Grills is cool. What three things does Kate say he can do? The answer was, he can cook, he can LARP, and he can put out fires. He is cool. Grills is cool. Mm -hmm. Yes, great stuff. Just the man you need. Exactly. Final episode on episode six. So this is Christmas. What colour coat was Yelena wearing when she arrived at the party? Everybody recognised that because she was wearing Christmas green. She was wearing a big green coat uh, standing out uh, in her, on her arrival. Very cool. She certainly was. So, fellow defenders, the goodies for this pub quiz are um, Hawkeye and Kate Bishop Funko Pops once they are released. Mm-hmm. So, again, they are pre-order Funko Pops. Yeah. So, w- they will be put on order and they will be shipped once they become available. Absolutely. Um, so, there may be a little bit of wait, but they are the the goodies for uh, the... Um, overall winner of the pub quiz absolutely and what's even cuter is kate bishop comes with lucky the pizza dog yes great so there were 11 possible answers out of the pub quiz a couple of multi-part questions in there from john uh, throwing them into uh into the challenge for the pub quiz i guess what we have 11 fellow defenders who got every single question right in the pub quiz yes Yes. Well done. That's a high success rate uh, we have here. Uh, really good stuff. And yeah. I also think given the time of year that it was and stuff, everybody getting all the questions in and answering the questions was really cool. Uh, thanks to everybody who sent your Christmas messages on 
uh, on your emails with all your uh, all your answers. That was really cool. Yeah, it was that. really really nice. Yeah, yeah, I even saw um, Dr. Bob Phillips was uh, was trying out another comic with uh, and trying to spell it phonetically. Um, Irish doesn't work phonetically, unfortunately. So uh, <laughs> so I, I could tell what you were trying to say, Dr. Bob, but um, but I don't think the phonetics quite work when you're uh, when you're talking in Irish because it's a bit of a weird language with. Uh, I think it's twenty four letters in the alphabet. It is, than and it's 26. not the same phonetics at all. No. No, I can test it. It should, just shouldn't be a language at this point. <laughs> I, I really can testify to that. Certainly, when I first moved uh, over to this fantastic yeah. place, I'm going to totally You're disagree like, with you. Yeah, Chris. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I'm going to totally disagree with you, Chris. Of course, Irish should be a language. It's our national language, just like every other country. You don't have to speak it. But it is our national language. Um, let's go through the 11 fellow defenders who have gotten all of the answers right. We have Suzanne Nelson, James Irwin, Adam Downing, Victor Sellers, Celine Milkisler, Claire Payne, Steve Brown, Dr. Bob Phillips, Will Walton, Jamie Lawson, and Andrew from Edmonton. Well done, everybody. Chris, yes. do you want to ask our Google helper in the sky for a number between 1 and 11 and see who has gotten their hands on the Hawkeye goodies. Sure. Hey, Google, randomly give me a number between 1 and 11. Here's a random number, 11. Great stuff. Uh, number 11 is Andrew from Edmonton well in Canada. So... Really good stuff, Andrew. I think first time quizzer. I think uh, so, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think so. Uh, so really, Andrew. really good. Yeah. Yeah. I love your the, the work that you guys do up in Edmonton, especially in video games. Bioware is there. Uh, well, hopefully. that hopefully... That is true, yes. Did you know, we spent an entire week in Edmonton myself yeah. and John? It was a fantastic time. We have a friend who lives in Edmonton, and we're up there in the middle of winter, and by Golly gosh, it was chilly. <laughs> it's very cold. I think my nose um, almost froze. Certainly my at face. night when the wind started. Um, yes. Dare I say it? Uh, yes. Smuggling peanuts, is that the word, I guess? I think that is it. Yeah. Well, congratulations, Andrew. Really, congratulations for winning that. Uh, give us a quick shout, and obviously, they will uh, be able to get the goodies to you as soon as they are released. Mm hmm. And of course, as always, a big thank you to all the participants in the pub quiz. It is really Absolutely. great the uh, support that you give this pub quiz that we have uh, when we're at s pretty much every uh, show that we cover now, but certainly at least for the Marvel stuff as yeah. well. That's where it, it, it kicked off from. So a big yeah. thank you to everyone that enters, everyone sent in questions and uh, really, really appreciate it. And Finally, another big congratulations to Andrew from Edmonton for winning the goodies, the yep. uh, Funko Pops. Absolutely. Next one up, I think, is going to be for Moon Knight, uh, which comes out, as we said, on the 31st of March. What makes that really exciting is uh, that means loads of Moon Knight Funko Pops are going to be coming. It certainly it is. Cool. But also, it's they, they're the, in the trailer, they're in the UK, so it actually is a pub. Yes. It's actual pub. Yes. And we could say it's the bar with no name. The pub with no name quiz there you go Maybe. there we go yes, yes. will we get on to some feedback guys let's do it yes first off yes we have some email feedback from jimbo urn what a satisfying finish to an excellent series that really felt like a handing over the baton which by the way my phone also corrected to barton <laughs> excellent stuff jimbo <laughs> that's pretty good and um, even if it still leaves the door open for clint to return in future and what good hands things are in now Every time Kate and Yelena were on screen together was pure joy, especially the lift scene with the buttons and stop making me like you. <laughs> All I can say is these two need their own series or film together as soon as possible. The whole Rockefeller tree ice rink scene was so fun and imaginative with trick arrows used really well. I actually rewound just to watch it over again, and I'm sure you guys picked up on the Robin Hood shot Clint does, which was almost underplayed. Although at least Clint gets a nice shot from Kazzy for it. 
I don't even have time to talk about how much fun this episode was for Jack, a.k.a. Ron Burgundy, <laughs> um, as the other big highlight was, of course, getting so much screen time with Mr. Fisk, who felt like he had never been away. Mm -hmm. Despite what looked like a tricky ending for him, the fact he was able to walk away from a car crashing him through a wall unscathed, as well as a pretty large explosion in the shop, an off-screen gunshot from Point Blank sounds to me like more of a flesh wound, mm -hmm. and I hope to see more of him in the future series. As for the post-credits, I had been expecting something, but have to say, did not see this one coming, and now I won't be able to get the song out of my head until we are well into the new year. Mm -hmm. All I can say, Jimbo, is I hope it's still ringing loud and clear <laughs> uh, this far into 2022. Yes, we can do um, it all day. Jimbo continues, All I can say is bravo to Marvel and Disney for this early Christmas present. And having just watched the new Spidey, this really was a fantastic way to round out the year. And with so much more lined up for 2022, if they keep up the standard from the four shows we've seen this year, we are really going to enjoy the next one. And I'm looking forward to watching them with you guys. Merry Christmas to all, Jimbo. And of course, Jimbo, a Merry Christmas to you and Happy New Year. And we are really excited to have all you fellow defenders um, joining us in 2022 for the content that's coming out from Marvel and from Disney+. Plus. Mm -hmm. uh, it will be really, really good, I think. Um, I, for one, definitely agree. Kate and Yelena need to have their own series or film together maybe yeah. it will be in the shape of a hawkeye season two with kate bishop at the helm and yelena involved in some way and if they get a film i really hope they don't leave it as late as they did with uh, black widow's mm -hmm. movie as well uh, because i do think you're right um this this coupling here of kate and yelena was really really good and yelena from the black widow movie was just such a joy as well so definitely yeah. with you on that as well yeah it feels like we're not they haven't given us any kind of announcement that we're building up to something like the tv version of the avengers or what netflix did with the defenders over on over on the, over on netflix with the marvel properties there, there doesn't seem to be something that we're aiming towards with all these shows and now we're getting so many characters being added into the universe that you just don't know when these characters are going to turn up together again um, yeah, and what, what show or and in, in what movie they're going to turn up together again? You know, as we said before, we saw Yelena in Black Widow, and then she turns up in Hawkeye a couple of months later. That's great. Love that the, that those were so close together when they were eventually released. But uh, you never know; we could be seeing those characters in Moon Knight in a couple of weeks' time. Yeah, no, we we still don't know. And IMDb and uh, Google are useless when you look at the casting because everyone's in there. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Excellent. Thanks so much, Jimbo. Uh, our second email comes in from Coffee and Vodka, who says, Greetings, unexpectedly musical defenders. Where to start? Comic accurate cane, but that shirt, damn. Turning the joke that was the Martha moment into something that actually resonates between Yelena and Clint. Wilson Fisk getting beaten via a flicked cufflink taken from his father, whom he murdered. Brilliant. In the comics, Echo blinded Kingpin, not killed him, so I'm assuming that's what happened here. So much more to say, I'm sure, but in short, a fantastic conclusion to a great series, which I hope wasn't ruined for Derek with the watch reveal. With both Willie and Matt now officially part of the fold, looking forward to 2023, finally, I'm not sure if I greatly enjoyed or thoroughly hated the musical gift enjoyably itchy <laughs> as a score five willy lip twitches barton clint bartons holiday hooters and tiny tracks <laughs> out of five uh come here, vodka there's so much to discuss there with, with those out of five willy lip twitches is by far the funniest <laughs> it is it is Gavin Vodka says P.S. Grills didn't die Jack is Jack and not a cover for anything but is potentially dangerous but dopey self Eleanor reported by Kate taking down one of the most expensive trees in New York if I didn't have dogs to walk I could go on forever still though even after a binge watch Hawkeye season one might make my top five but Daredevil and Jessica Jones are safe in their top spots peace and take care coffee and vodka Thank you so much, Coffee and Vodka, yeah, this, for, for the uh, feedback there. Absolutely. There's so many uh, things that we thought might happen and were being set up at the beginning of the series that didn't come to pass. Well, absolutely. Uh, you know, yeah. Like, Grills didn't die. That seems like the obvious one. That that's why they were setting it up. But no, we have a whole group of LARPers that ended off 
creating the costumes for Hawkeye and for uh, for Hawkeye, I guess. Yeah, def- <laughs> definitely. Um, and I, I mean, I do think, you know, what you say, uh, coffee and vodka, and it echoes what Jimbo just said as well. Um, the, the kingpin being there was just phenomenally good. Mm-hmm. Like having Wilson Fisk for, uh, played by Vincent D'Onofrio back on screen is, is just sheer joy. Uh, and so, yes, hopefully, uh, as we were saying, it, it wasn't really a gunshot that killed, probably just maimed or, or yeah. wounded, um, to be honest. Deaf and or blinded. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, pretty, pretty likely that they wouldn't have brought, uh, Vince D'Onofrio back, uh, for that particular moment to never see him again. But you never know. He's a big actor. He may not be able to come back again, but it gives him options, as we always like to say. That's how Marvel likes to leave it. Off screen death hardly ever means death. <laughs> yes, exactly. But thank you so much, Coffee and Vodka. Next up, we have an email from Victor Von Doom, who had this to say. Season's greeting defenders. Wow. What a great series finale. As I stated earlier, this is my new favourite Christmas-themed action comedy thriller. Mm. From the action to drama and music, especially Sammy Davis Jr. and Ella Fitzgerald, I found it fantastic. The Kingpin was as chilling as ever. Only Kingpin could turn lovers and family against each other like that. Can you check the timeline for me? Does this all transpire prior to the Netflix Daredevil series, as we're not sure of the outcome of the Maya Kingpin face-off? Quick aside... We potentially think it's after because of the snap. He's trying to apparently trying to get all of his kind of he disappeared with the snap and now he's trying to rebuild his empire. But it also the whole Daredevil Netflix thing could be just a multiversal version of this Kingpin and this that never happened in this universe. We don't know. We honestly don't. Know. Well, according to Vincent D'Onofrio, he specifically says he feels. This is his character five years after the snap. He's lost control of the city. That's, that's his line. That, that's the intonation he gave to the line was he's lost this city and he wants to show everyone that he's here to take it back. He, his feeling on that is that was caused by the snap. He lost his control and is coming back to take it back. So, um, so he's been pretty clear about that's what he was told. Um, again, Marvel options. Um, so, uh, we don't know until we know, but, uh, but yes, this, this would, uh, be very likely to transpire significantly after the Netflix yes. Marvel series. Yeah. Victor went on to say, the Kate and Clint heart-to-heart talk really set up for me everything that followed. Mm-hmm. The LARPers were a nice addition to the story and action. I predict Jack will take up the mantle of the swordman, if only as a LARPer. <laughs> Quick aside here, there is now concept art out on the interwebs for Jack as swordsman. Whether it was at one point planned, he would have a swordsman outfit, mm-hmm. or he'd have his own LARPing uniform to look like the current swordsman, or at one point in story development, he was dressed as comic accurate to a degree swordsman mm-hmm. in concept art. Um, so interesting, or maybe it's a future thing. Again, Marvel have options. Going on, Victor went, I wonder what Yelena will think of Val now she knows the truth of Natasha's death. Mm-hmm. Kate toppling the Rockefeller Center Christmas tree and the owl carrying off the tracksuit mafia minivan was a hoot. <laughs> I found the Kate versus Kingpin fight scary as I remember what Kingpin did to Daredevil on Netflix. Mm-hmm. With Clint's tutelage, I believe Kate will shine as the new Hawkeye. As a big Broadway musical fan, I love the end credits number, despite it being a Bit nerdy. Mm-hmm. If I may offer a rating, five tracksuit mafia minivans out of five. Are these on ice or are those ones that have been taken by the L? Question mark. <laughs> we plan to binge the series on Christmas Eve with a bit of eggnog. Stay safe, defenders. Merry Christmas and happy holidays. Excelsior, Victor Von Doom. Thank you, Victor. Really appreciate the email. Um, yeah, I think like you, Kate will be a really good Hawkeye going forward yes i hope you got to sit down and binge with that eggnog as well and um, it, again it seems a little strange saying it it uh, was on the 19th of january <laughs> but nonetheless it is a big thanks for the merry christmas and happy holidays uh victor and to your point yeah that whole yelena and val element i think it's probably one of the bigger things that has implications from this mm-hmm. series um to the rest of um the the shows given Val's involvement in Falcon and the Winter Soldier or um as well as at the end of Black Widow as well. Yeah. So that's a nice little connection and through point yeah. and uh 
Hopefully we see a bit of that uh, coming on screen as well. I'm, I'm absolutely sure uh, we will. I think if you put up a, a list of the most requested uh, post credit scenes at the end of Hawkeye, I think everybody was expecting that it was Yelena and uh, and Val meeting up to kind of close that loop and continue that storyline on to uh, the next season or the next appearance. So it'll be interesting as to how, as to when those two come together. But I don't think Yelena is going to be very happy to be um, to have been sent on a mission in that way. Yeah, not Ex- at all. But uh, big thanks, Victor, for for the feedback. Jerry in Niceville has some uh, great thoughts. Jerry says, hey, bros, first things first, holiday Easter eggs. First off, Elf, Kate pressing the elevator buttons. Ah, uh, Yes, of course. This is in response to, uh, I was saying, if there are any Christmas movies in, that were referenced in the last episode uh, that, that you guys had caught. Yes. Uh, there was a few that I'd missed. Elf definitely was one of them. Yeah, good uh, call out there, Jerry. Home Alone. Arrow building and the torture of the tracksuits. Of course, yes. Yes, there is, of course, Die Hard, shooting of the windows and the ambulance scene. Mm -hmm. The most important Easter egg, the Grinch. Yelena dressed in Grinch green for Christmas, (laughs) um, for sure. And her heart grows three sizes in the end. Excellent. Yeah, excellent stuff. A great call out to some of those uh, important Christmas Easter eggs, uh, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, um, I knew there was more that, I just, that we just had. Oh, absolutely, podcast, so definitely. Yeah, so a really good spot there, Jerry. Uh, Jerry continues, overall, the finale was a mixed bag for me. Case and Clint's storyline was fantastic. Case and Yelena, give me more. Clint and Yelena, great stuff. Kingpin and Maya felt rushed. Mm. We need this in episode five and fleshed out in episode six. Maya's story was not handled properly. It, it does not excite me for her series. Social commentary Jack out of jail because he is rich. Mm-hmm. Kate's mom will get the same treatment too. Kingpin dead? No way. Shot in the eye and left for, or left for dead. Uh, just like in the Daredevil comic. Why is the Agent 19 reveal important? Seems like a waste. It is. Uh, Rogers the musical, pure cringe. (laughs) The Hawkeye series was good overall, though. It solidifies Kate Bishop in the MCU. Yelena is by far the brightest star in the new phase of the MCU. Jeremy Renner reminds us he is a damn fine actor. But what it failed to do for me was caring about Echo and her future show. Out of all the Marvel shows Disney Plus has put out, What If is number one, Loki number two, WandaVision number three, Hawkeye number four, Falcon and the Winter Soldier number five. See you bros next year. Jerry in Niceville. Yep, thank you so much for that. Again, I think for us, fingers crossed that Kingpin probably is just um, wounded in some way and certainly sort of blinded would be uh, poetic justice for for Maya, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And, and just to mention, I know I, I, I gruffly said it there, but yeah, the 19 reveal is not important right now. It's terrible. It's a, it's an absolute waste of, <laughs> of an idea for the show, uh, unless they do something with it. And I think some suggestions that potentially whatever this is supposed to mean would be that um, Clint's wife would team up with Kate in the future. So uh, while they may not be able to get Jerry Renner back, they may get his wife back and she can continue on the story of uh, helping out Kate Bishop in the future. So uh, so maybe that's it. But yeah, no, it was, a, it was a terrible reveal that annoyed quite a lot of fans. Yes, it really <laughs> did. And certainly one just sat to the left of me. Um, yes. And, it, and it's not even one of those reveals that, that if you didn't watch agents of shield you'd find it interesting so i think that's that's the that's the problem so yeah so big thanks jerry i must say i i cannot believe that you thought rogers the musical was pure cringe is that not <laughs> what musicals should be in any case absolutely absolutely <laughs> thanks jerry uh, we also got some feedback in by email from andrew who sent us some questions on the season he says hi chris john and derek i just sent in my answers to the pub quiz and i have had a few questions of my own uh, spoilers, Andrew, you won. Well <laughs> Congratulations, <done>. Andrew. <laughs> well yes. done. Uh, Andrew's first question is, no one ever mentioned that Kaze actually caught one of Clint's arrows in the final battle. The only people we saw do that in the past were Loki and Vision. Very curious. His second question and comment is, the Kingpin survived being hit by a car, two arrows right into his chest, and an explosion right under his feet, and probably a point-blank gunshot. 
Do you think that this ability might be otherworldly? Might the kingpin be a scroll? Great podcast, guys, from Andrew. Oh, I'm telling you, you know, a scroll reveal is coming and it's going to be somebody that we know in this universe. I, I like the idea that that's, that that is Kingpin. Um, he does seem quite powered, quite, quite heavily powered if you take all of that together. But if we remember Daredevil, he did take a lot of punishment as well. Yeah. Um, throughout that show, he always did take way more punishment than you would expect. A, a, a yeah. Character to take. E- yeah. Even in the comics, he's always had that super human feel to him and mm. um, that he, he can certainly take uh sort of more than even the above average human being yeah and um, his pain threshold's pretty high i would say so um but i i like the theory that he might be a scroll i think that's a great that's idea <laughs> uh for sure but i i, I guess that they would probably choose someone who's more sort of embedded into the the current version of the MCU at this stage. But who knows? I know loads of people want a Daredevil series on Disney Plus. I, I really do. I know so pe- so many people are really excited to see these characters back. But this would be one of those great twists. That's to have true. Have Vincent D'Onofrio yeah. be a scroll, and it doesn't necessarily mean that we couldn't get Vincent D'Onofrio playing Kingpin again in a later show, just because. It's revealed that he's a scroll. I, I love the idea of doing a big reveal of a big character. Definitely, so, yeah. definitely. Cool. Well, if you think about Secret Invasion in the comic books, the, the it was all discovered by the death of Elektra, mm-hmm. um, and it was discovered that Elektra was a scroll. She came back because she was then after the end of Secret Invasion, all the people who were replaced were brought back in to humanity. So. It could be a, actually, it's a pretty amazing way to buy some time. It's like, mm-hmm. well, Echo did kill him. Turns out he's just a scroll. She goes on her way. And then in Secret Invasion is discussed. And then at the end of Secret Invasion, the Vincent D'Onofio is back again because he was released along with all the other people who've been replaced. Yeah. Not a bad question. Definitely like an that. interesting one. Yes. I like that. Um, I, I- and I like your curious uh, sort of spot as well about Kazi catching uh, one of Clint's arrows mm-hmm. as well. So in the comic books, Kazi was a more powered, crazy kind of guy. Um, so that made sense because he went in the math fraction when he goes toe to toe with Clint mm. and does lots. So. I just think they kind of missed part of that, but you're right. He, it, it's only been done in the MCU by very few people. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Very cool. Thanks so much, Andrew, for your thoughts and congratulations again. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Next up, we have an email from Corey who said, Hi, first time writer. I've been listening since One Division. Two quick things. Did Fist seem overpowered? I know the comic version is some, something insanely impossible, like 3% body fat and stronger than Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but can he really get hit by a car like that? Get up like nothing happened, have an arrow explode with enough force to send him flying, and have no major injuries. I was kind of hoping to see a certain devil of Hell's Kitchen show up during this fight with Kate, perhaps with a freshly thrown brick in his hand, but I guess that was wishful thinking. Kingpin's obviously not dead, though. Second thing, theory on Laura. Could she be a former Hydra agent that infiltrated S.H.I.E.L.D. at some point, switched side, and is trying to keep her Hydra roots a secret? Special thanks to Claire Laffa, who indirectly led me to your podcast. Well, first of all, thank you, Claire, for bringing Corey to the podcast. And welcome, Corey. Mm -hmm. Glad to have you writing in. You've been here for nearly a year, and a year later, you are now writing in. It's great to have your feedback. We kind of discussed Fisk already, so... Yeah, I would love to see Daredevil, but he's coming in the future. On Laura, I'm going to hand over to Derek and go, Derek, what do you think of that? Um, it, it's entirely possible. Um, you know, the, the whole infiltration of Hydra of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, is, is a pretty standard story that, that happens uh, when anybody wants to talk about a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. Uh, it's pretty much a go-to storyline that they would use for, for a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. So it's, it's entirely possible. Um, I'm, yeah, I, I was just hoping she was Laura Brown, uh, rather than, um, Mockingbird. Uh, that's, that's, uh, that's kind of it. I guess we'll see it uh, in the future if they decide to pursue that, uh, that storyline in the future. If they don't, it was a real, it was a real waste of them chasing down the watch for five episodes if they don't try to pursue some kind of storyline with them in the future, wasn't it? Yep. 
Yeah, um, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. And as, as Corey said, thanks again to Claire Laffer. Claire Laffer has hosted this podcast with us, uh, back in the days of, uh, of the Defenders on Netflix. Um, she yeah, certainly so, did. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so thanks for, for leading Corey to us. Yeah. Thanks, Claire. And thanks, Corey, for the, the feedback. Really great stuff. We have a final email from Coffee and Vodka on the season overall. Mm-hmm. Coffee and Vodka says, greetings, New Year's Defenders. Indeed it is. New Year, new Defenders, new Marvel shows. It is going to be a cracking 2022. Coffee and Vodka says, hope your holidays went well. Speaking as a dedicated introvert, I can testify to the validity of cancelled plans being one of life's greatest joys, (laughs) as well as a fine opportunity to binge watch over some very neat scotch. With the TMI out of the way, and apologies for the length of this email in advance, onward and a bowward. In as much as the production should be judged on its own merit, this is as impossible to do with comic book properties as with pro wrestling or Law & Order (laughs) spin-offs. Just as important as the tale being told is what the tale is setting up for the next go-around. In the case of Hawkeye, this series did almost everything right – the introductions of Kate, Maya, Eleanor, Jack, the LARPers, and others, as well as the MVP of the show, Lucky the Pizza Dog. Mm-hmm. The reintroduction of Wilson Fisk, promoting Laura, thoroughly cementing Elena as a staple character, and so much more. Although the nostalgia factor was strong with the presence of Kingpin, it was used intelligently as the great nebulous threat highlighting Clint and Kate's story, rather than obscuring it. My standout moments are the car chase, all shared scenes between Kate and Yelena, the subway rides, and the ghost of Kingpin's daddy, kicking his butt via his cufflinks. As for the next go-around stuff, Echo should be good, that is, so long as they don't place her in between the hammer and the anvil of Daredevil and Kingpin, potentially diminishing her role in her own series. Speaking of which, should we get a Daredevil show, it seems Disney is trading the rough language and bloodiness of Netflix for heightened power sets, meaning more family-friendly ultraviolence. Kate and Yelena are golden wherever they appear next. Finally, as for the newly deconstructed Spider-Man tied to Hawkeye via Matt's cameo, should relations with Disney continue, I see well-constructed, visually stunning stories in the future. If under Sony, however, with its 1-6 and six win-loss record, odds on a much greater chance of another, let there be carnage than Spider-Man 2. Thanks as always, and wishing you all a healthy and prosperous 2022 peace and take care coffee and vodka thank you so much coffee and vodka yes all the best laid plans were um thrown into the the covid uh mixer uh whilst we were away uh, at christmas uh, and so we're only really just still catching up with things uh, and mm. so on uh, and as i said i thought that'd be the last time i said it last time ago about 15 minutes ago but yes this will definitely be the last time um so <laughs> yeah, being internetless doesn't allow us to do much binging unfortunately no we were binging other stuff i guess yeah. mainly books from my side anyway um getting through Wine the wheel mine. of time <laughs> in, in in short order and i i think um i think what you say here you know is really really on point uh about just how it introduced everything and certainly something like reintroducing Wilson Fisk, you know, it is a really delicate moment to do because there is so much connected uh, with that character. And um, I think it's interesting with Echo. Uh, t- to some degree, I-, I would agree with Jerry. I think maybe Echo's storyline, I don't think it was ever supposed to be anything too huge here. Um, but still, I think... Um, Echo storyline, along with Carzy, could have been given a little bit more oomph. And certainly for her own uh, series, I guess you could expect that to some degree, uh, for sure. Again, it's the ongoing, never-ending debate of maybe they should have had eight episodes rather than six, or they should have been closer to an hour long rather than the 45 yeah. minutes. Who knows? Uh, but certainly what we got, as you say was was really uh, spot on with great introductions reintroductions and for me i think the the car chase absolutely uh, was a standout the 
Kate and Yelena. And I think certainly it was episode four. There was some really sort of quite deep moments between Kate and um, Clint as well. And I thought they were really, really good. And yeah. lucky the dog, pizza dog. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks so much, Coffee Buck. I know that was probably a question for our year-end wrap-up and we were talking about the Marvel stuff. But what do you think? We're, we're at the end of five seasons of the show, all totaling to four hours each, I think, is the, is the stat. Uh, no matter what the configuration of the of the shows where roughly four to four and a half hours, yeah. I think um, that's their strategy now. So that, that is what we can expect from Marvel shows, wherever way they cut them up into the individual episodes time wise. Now that we know that's the strategy, we're not going to get, if we get 10 episodes, it will just be shorter episodes spread over 10 um, because their strategy is to hit that, that four and a half hour time. I g- yeah. I guess it depends on the format of the show because I thought the 30 minutes of one division with more, um, episodes in, in the, in their season just worked so well. Certainly at, at the start with the different, uh, eras ultimately and, mm-hmm. and all the way through until it, it was pretty much in the present. But then you're into the real end game stuff of everything yeah. that happened in one division. So I think it really worked, but I, I did like the, the longer episodes of, of Loki, uh, with, with Loki's six, um, mm-hmm episodes for their season and what I, if had the nine and, and yeah six on the other two drama shows yeah so yeah. It, it seems to be working pretty well I, I think it depends on the structure and the type of format and the type of story that they're telling ultimately mm-hmm. um I, I i think yeah personally i'm in this kind of i think they should get as much as they need every now and again we've gone wish it was a bit more wish it was a bit less wish it was just perfect kind of we were very much gold locksing it but overall i think between four and six hours seems to be the mark. Like, so, like, if you can go, worst case, you give everyone 50, each episode's 50 minutes of a six. Best case, so, like, that kind of nine, uh, 30 minutes. Um, but, or you go, like, six episodes, each one being, like I said, each one being kind of like 40 to 50 minutes, and you're nearly getting that closer to six. I think if we look at, say, Boba Fett, which is currently on, like episode two, one was 34 minutes. Episode two was nearly a full hour. Episode three was back to kind of a 30, 40 minute, and I'm not quite sure about episode four yet. So it's that kind of like, it's just giving them what they need, giving them that space of, okay, you've got up to f- between four and six hours. So make it work. Yeah, that definitely. And I think I would agree with that as well. I think it also depends on what you actually need to tell the show. But maybe it's the more, I don't know, more, it, it's a, just required for it yeah. to go on Disney Plus. So there's a slight requirement around sort of that range of how long the overall season will be. But, um, my mind is give them what they need to tell their story. Um, it, it's work on the story and, yeah. and the overarching story and, and, and try and get that um, into, you know, whether it, whatever season length it, it's going to be, to be yeah, honest. I was just trying to do some quick Googling there. As far as I'm aware, they're all within about 15 minutes overall for all five seasons. Interesting. All seasons are roughly within about 15 minutes, and that's four to four and a half hours of actual time. So that seems to be the guide. Like, like you want to have a movie coming in about two hours, it seems to be the guide for the shows. It seems to be around that. So, interesting. Uh, so that's quite interesting. Um, I'll have to check that and make sure I'm right, because I don't want to uh, be tapping away while I'm supposed to be uh, going on to more feedback. But excellent stuff. Let's go on to Facebook. Uh, first up on Facebook, Selena Kisler has some feedback on our finale podcast. He says, cool to get the origin story of Derek and Chris. I <laughs> loved Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and I'm holding out hope that the number 19 can be assigned to any agent. As John said, so I post this with apologies to Derek. My ears perked up in episode five when Yelena was rattling off Kate's accomplishments and mentioned her impressive college GPA. Thinking about Kate's childhood ambitions since seeing Clint in the Battle of New York and where that took her, I immediately thought, I guess the S.H.I.E.L.D. Academy doesn't exist in this universe. <laughs> I couldn't agree more with Chris that we needed a post credit scene in addition to the mid credits musical number. Often in the movies, one of the post mid credits is a joke and the other sets something up. I wanted the setup, preferably that Kingpin is alive. 
It was so great to hear you guys on a show with so many Defenders vibes, street-level criminals, high society, characters missing senses, talk of dragons, and of course, Kingpin, and in some some major MCU movie crossover characters, and this was my favourite of the Disney Plus shows so far, just edging out WandaVision. Thanks, Salim. Yeah, thanks, Salim. Interesting to see it's just edged out WandaVision. Hmm. I'm hearing that. I'm hearing it's definitely in a lot of people's top three. Mm Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Thanks, Salim. Thanks, Salim. Yes. Also on Facebook, Claire Payne says, an awesome finale. I saw everything that I hoped for in the first 30 minutes. Kingpin and his connection to Eleanor, Kate and Clint in their new suits. A great elevator fight between Yelena and Kate and a nice montage of the creation trick arrows. I've only watched it once and sat there grinning the whole way through. I'm glad we got the ending of Kate joining the Bartons. So what is next? Is Kingpin dead? Will we see Yelena and Kate team up? Whatever happens, I enjoyed every second of the show and thankful for getting an hour-long finale. And, oh joy for the post credit scene, a Rogers the Musical number in full. <laughs> also, the LARPers role in this episode was brilliant, and Jack now being a potential new member. Happy Christmas, Defenders! Happy Christmas to you, Claire. Thank you so much. Yes, that musical number was just oh joy, for sure. <laughs> it was really, really good. Interestingly, coming out of lockdown um, earlier in, in the autumn, then um, one of the first things we did, because we had booked it two years ago approximately, was go to see a musical. So it was really nice seeing this musical mid-credit scene, uh, for sure. Absolutely. I think, as as Salim has just said, I also do quite like having a meaningful or more serious one, but I have to say, uh, as comedy, just pure joyous moments, and certainly given the Christmas uh, nature of this show uh the 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 musical number from rogers the musical was just so good and of course yeah. we all should have just guessed it there were so many billboards adverts and points of reference mm-hmm. to this show let alone them sitting in it in episode one and, and watching it as the audience and um, that uh it, it it was uh, no surprise well add the fact that the track itself was released on spotify the week after the episode, the ah, episode came out. So uh, you would have expected that they had it all all filmed uh, live as well. Excellent stuff. Thanks, Claire. Also on Facebook, Heather Wallace says, we all love Jack now, don't we? He was fabulous and seemingly holds no grudges either against Eleanor for framing him or Kate for her hostility. The only time he was annoyed was when he had a spot of blood on his on his cravat. What a top bloke. And I loved how he took took down Armand the Seventh. Speaking of the Armands, Armand the Third would have to be the great great grandfather of Armand the Seventh. Do they have like fifteen kids at fifteen? No wonder Armand the Seventh is interested in Jack's wine collection so young. <laughs> so <laughs> Laura is an agent of Shield, as we all suspected that the watch is either the most MacGuffin MacGuffin to ever MacGuffin. Why exactly were the bros <laughs> after it at the black market auction? Or will be a part in some form of spin-off. Yelena and Kate's fight scene through the building was so good. It had great choreography and banter. The elevator scene was gold. And kudos for Kate for slowing it down by pressing all the buttons. Very clever. I was also impressed with Yelena's hair braid. Top-notch work. Clint and Yelena's fight was similar to Sam's and Carly's. Neither was fighting, just defending. While the other person's rage wore away. Hearing Nat's whistle was moving, although I do wonder how Val will take the commission not being completed. The full number from Rogers the Musical was hilarious. Adam Pascal, who played the first New Yorker right at the beginning of the number, looked like he was going to burst out laughing any second. I wonder if in this MCU reality there's an actor called Chris Evans. I hear he loves donning tap shoes and getting out the jazz hands. He'd be perfect for the lead in this musical. Merry Christmas, everyone, and huge thanks to John, Derek, and Chris for such sterling work on so many projects all year this year. Thank you so much, Heather. Some really interesting thoughts there. I'm glad you enjoyed the show as well. And the idea of Chris Evans uh, popping up on stage to perform as uh, Captain America <laughs> in, uh, in the musical uh, would be hilarious. Uh, on the Armands, what it seemed like when we got introduced to them at the beginning is that everybody gives their own child the name Armand and then the numbers are given to them, assigned as to when they're born. Basically, it's not uh, It's not just Armand the first 
his son gets Armand the second, and then his son gets Armand the third. It's not like the royalty uh, lineage, but because it, it's a cousin of Armand the third, who is Armand the seventh. It's not his son. So, uh, so that's, well. that's what it is. So it's basically there's loads of Armands throughout the family. It's a name that's passed throughout the family, and they're all given those numbers. So it's not like uh, not like. <laughs> are you sure well, you've not seen the making of because i don't know how you could possibly know that it's from the first episode you'll see it in the description. Oh, okay grand um i definitely just thought it was armands were just like royalty so it's like they they they're so wealthy and live forever that they're about five generations like deep i guess well we do know there's one less armand than there, so <laughs> absolutely <laughs> Thank you so much, Heather. Also over on Facebook, we have feedback from Michael Booth who said, wow, did they really just bring Kingpin back to shoot him? <laughs> Surely not. The cheeky off-screen gunshot gives us all hope he will be back. An excellent final episode with a bunch of brilliant fights and good emotional payoffs as well. I know you guys talked about Hawkeye's kill count last episode, but wow, did the bodies rack up. Crazy Jack just straight up slaughtering the tracksuit mafia good with his sword, and Clint and Kate turn the guy's chuck into owl food. P.S. I glad, P.S. Glad I caught the end credits. I especially like the moment where actor Cap blocked actor Hawkeye with his shield, and he got cranky. <laughs> yes, I also do really like the fact that they had uh, actor. Uh, Ant Man. <laughs> yeah, there absolutely. Because of, and it took me ages to get it, because of Endgame. He's there because of Endgame. Because in Endgame, he went back in time. That's why he's there, there. Because someone probably saw Ant Man back in the Battle of New York. No, yeah, no, I think that's, I think, I think that's definitely possible. Yep. Interesting. Because Hawkeye even comments that guy wasn't even there. Um, but in was. the first episode, he's like, that guy wasn't even there. It's like he's been added because he's a popular Avenger. So we can stick <laughs> him in to do fun stuff with in our musical show. And nobody will really care about the actual facts. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but that's an interesting call, like Chris. Thanks so much, Michael. Yeah, thank you so much, Michael. Uh, next on Facebook is Dr. Bob Phillips. He says, Merry Christmas. A soft and glowing feeling after this. Adored the formal wear. Uh, the fletching, the swordsman the coin flick payoff, and the redemption of Maya. Did she have one of those cage-piercing bullets? When you add the against the odds, including filming in COVID restrictions, that ice rink battle was outstanding. Mm. Yep, the, the battle on the ice rink really just paid off in inbounds. And uh, yeah, the little coin flick uh, payoff with the, the cuff link, was just so good um, in in this final episode, and, and it is. It just it links to earlier in the season, but also as well, it's that nice little reference to the the comics as well, which I always think um, it just feels like this continually ongoing saga, and, and it was really really good. Mm, yeah, I, I love the idea that uh, that Kingpin might possibly have a, a power akin to Luke Cage, where you'd need a Judas bullet to break his skin. So um, that bullet might just bounce off him uh, from Maya. <laughs> That's quite interesting. So the unbreakable Kingpin. Yeah, certainly coming, could. Coming certainly Disney could. Soon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thanks, Dr. Bob, for, for the feedback. Yeah, thanks, Dr. Bob. We also have feedback from Richard Blaze, who had, wow, that was a real fan-pleasing finale. Thought it was great. And the song at the end only makes me wish they tore Rogers the musical for real. Thanks, Rich. Yeah, I see a lot of people who are saying that now. <laughs> a lot of people want to see that stage play. I'm kind of there as well. I'm not. I'm. I'm I'd be down. You, I'd be down. You never know. Peaky Blinders was just announced as a uh, as a musical uh, this week, coming from the creator of Peaky Blinders, at least. So uh, at least there's wow. something. But uh, Peaky Blinders, an ultra violent <laughs> TV show uh, in the UK. I'm intrigued to see how that would work as a musical. But you never know. Uh, thanks, Richard. Uh, Marceline van der Berg says, "I absolutely love the whole season and the finale." Amazing. Clint and Yelena made me cry. Okay, I'm a crybaby, so that's not too hard. I really adore all the Kate Yelena scenes, and I want so much more out of those two. I'm really partial to human superheroes without superpowers, etc. And Hawkeye gave me exactly what I love so much about that. 
But the thing that really stood out for me in this show was Maya and her amazing disability representation. We get far too little of that, and most of the time, not in this awesome way. Someone who just has a disability, deaf and prosthesis in this case, but is absolutely awesome and in no way any less because of it. As someone with a mobility issue who has to use a mobility aid myself, I really need characters like her, and I'm so glad and grateful that they wrote her this way, and even more excited that the cast and actor with those disabilities to play her which is even more rare than writing a character with disabilities. Most of the time, you see able-bodied actors in those roles. Marjolaine, you're absolutely right. It is really important to have this role in here and really important to have the fact that this is a lead-in to Echo's character in future. We will be seeing her back in her own show led by her as a character and seeing how powerful she is and seeing how interesting the character is makes me really excited to see the show. So um, really important to see that on screen. Yes, yes. Really looking forward to it. And thank you for uh, writing in, giving us your, your view on that. But completely agree. Um, the 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 actress who plays Maya is fantastic. Absolutely, totally agree. Thanks, Marjolaine. Yeah, thanks, Marjolaine. Also, uh, Sandy Resendez says, as a huge Rent fan, hearing Adam Pascal singing about Rent being high in New York City was all I ever knew <laughs> I good. needed. Seriously, great finale. Sad the season is over. Loved everything about this show. Yes, me too, Sandy. Thanks so much for that. Um, yeah, and you just never know what it is that you need in any given moment. That's true. Yeah, sometimes they just deliver it for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Also, Kelly Resendez uh, says on Facebook, this episode and the entire series was so entertaining. I loved every minute of it. This was right up there with WandaVision where I was so excited for the next episode every week. Now that it's over, I guess I'll just have to rewatch. The Kingpin Sweet Christmas was Vincent D'Onofrio fantastic. He did not miss a beat. The look, the looks, the voice brought all of the great Daredevil series back. Mm -hmm. Wasn't sure if they would refer to him as Wilson Fisk in this or just Kingpin to possibly keep the, the Netflix and Disney Plus series separated, but glad they did. He was a larger-than-life figure in the Netflix shows, but it seems here they elevated that, the way they filmed him to appear even larger and is it just me, or does he now appear stronger? Mm -hmm. I mean, he ripped off and flung the door off Eleanor's car, among other things. No way he is dead after that. Kelly continues, The conversation between Clint and Kate was great. He is finally resigned to the idea that she is going to do this, and that she is his partner. That moment was what they both needed. The action was awesome, from the party to Kate taking on Kingpin and holding her own to the battle in Rockefeller Center. The cufflink flick, the trick arrows, I knew he had to have an arrow stash, mm -hmm. action figure-sized tracksuits, and the Hawkeye suit reveals, I knew I saw a flash of purple under Clint's torn dress shirt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Finally, the end scene we all wanted, Clint and Kate go home for Christmas, Laura, nay Mockingbird, gets her watch back, although I'm a little confused on the importance of it other than the character reveal. While we don't get a Hawkeye will return, Clint giving Kate the Hawkeye moniker is all I needed. Finally, I promise how many of us knew that we wanted and needed that full-on I-can-do-this-all-day number from Rogers the musical as an end credit scene. I was smiling the whole number. Thanks, guys, and happy holidays. Thank you so much, Kelly, uh, for the feedback. Thanks, Kelly. Really good to hear from you there. I'm glad you enjoyed the show so much. It was really good. Some really good stuff, particularly in that final episode, isn't it? Um, and that big reminder of Daredevil as a show and how great Vincent D'Onofrio is. Uh, I've seen from our downloads that people are already going back and checking out uh, Daredevil, just our podcast alone. So I can only imagine what Netflix numbers are getting for uh, for people wanting to check out his performance in, uh, over in Daredevil as well. Definitely. I must say, I I would love to rewatch Daredevil uh, in the near future after after this. And then, of course, it would be Jessica Jones, and then it would be Luke Cage, for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. Uh, loved those shows. Yes, there's unfortunately just way too much content to go back at this point. There really, really is. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, big thank you, Kelly, again. And thank you to everyone who has sent in uh, the feedback through Facebook and by email. 
uh, for this episode, apologies, it's a little later, mm-hmm. I guess, than scheduled, but we really do want to talk through your points and, and, and to allow all the fellow defenders to listen to all our uh, feedback um, that we get through from our listeners. It's Absolutely. really, really good. And, and again, all your lovely happy holiday messages and happy new year messages. Always great to, to read those out as well. So thanks so much for everybody that's been sending those into us um, throughout, yeah. throughout the last couple of weeks. This episode would have made so much more sense if we had the assembled making of Hawkeye it episode really would. to discuss now because it would it would make sense why we held it off for so many weeks. But now it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it was on the official schedule from Marvel, I promise you. It was supposed to be out today, the 19th of, uh, of January. Or uh, was it? But we do need to move on from Hawkeye. We need to close it down and move on to other things. We do have one final way to say goodbye to it uh, from our wonderful fellow defender, Jerry. He has a, uh, a special advert for us to close out Hawkeye. Ooh, intriguing. Hey, this is Jerry Niceville. I'm sending you this funny uh, Trust Bro ad that I made. Hope you enjoy. Hey, bro. If you're in the greater New York area and you need some help, well, I can tell you, bro, try trust bro. We in the greater New York area look out for everyone, including the big guy. He likes looking out for all the bros. So if you need to move anywhere, anything, call 555-BRO-TO-BRO. Again, that's (laughs) 555-BRO-TO-BRO. And make sure to tell them that Lexi sent you. (laughs) Bro, it was such good, bro. So good, bro. You know, bro, 555, trust a bro. Bro, (laughs) Uh, fantastic stuff, Jerry. Loved, loved it. Um, That's so good. Really, really enjoyed that. Laughing my my little head off there. I love it, Jerry. Thank you so much for taking the time to send that in. Definitely. Really, Really good fun. And... Uh, also, thank you to our fellow um, <laughs> industrialists who've been sending in their thoughts about other shows that we're not covering. Uh, we have got some feedback in for Bubba Fett. Uh, we have got feedback in for Peacemaker. Um, we have got feedback in for um, one other show that we're not covering, and I've just suddenly gone out of my head. Um, we will be covering Witcher next week. Uh, on our next podcast. So if you want to send us in thoughts about Witcher Season 2, uh, just email us to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com with your thoughts about any of the episodes of The Witcher. Mm. <laughs> That's John's thoughts about all of Season 2 of The Witcher. Mm. <laughs> no, I was trying to do a Henry Cavill impression. How <laughs> oh, well, sorry, a it's Witcher a impression. But just uh, lie in a, in a hot tub and spread your legs. That doesn't work very well on, uh, on <laughs> no, a podcast, Chris. I might electrocute it myself. <laughs> <laughs> you can also join us over on our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash TV Podcast Industries or follow us on Twitter at TV Pod Industries. Please share your thoughts with us about the shows that are coming up. We have got lots more to talk about uh, over the rest of this year. Um, but unfortunately, we're still trying to get our feet back under the table <laughs> as we get uh, caught up with the stuff that we should have been covering uh, at the beginning of this month. Yeah. And if you like what you hear, don't forget you can head on over to patreon.com slash TV Podcast Industries, where for just a single dollar dollar bill, y'all, you can trust a bro and help us keep creating well into 2022. Don't want to sign up on Patreon? Well, buy our editors a coffee, i.e. our editors, Derek. You can go to <laughs> buymeacoffee.com slash TVPI and just do a one-off donation of a coffee. It really helps keep him in caffeine. Don't have a dollar to throw away? Don't worry. Just make sure you head on over to TV Podcast Industries. Especially, actually, head on over to Spotify.com or just Spotify. Go rate us, leave us a review because it helps with the old algo to transparency <laughs> and all that fun and games, you know. The, the bit of algorithmic fun and games. But no, I would really appreciate everyone leaving a five-star review because you trust a bro, and it is always good to do. Yes, indeed. Next week, we'll be covering the first four episodes of The Witcher Season 2, uh, possibly with the Marvel's assembled uh, making of Hawkeye, if <laughs> no. it ever comes out on Disney+. Plus. No, they missed their chance now. We don't have time. <laughs> don't have time. We have to move on. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but as always, fellow defenders, thank you so much for listening, uh, for contributing and getting involved. It is, as always, a pleasure discussing all things Hawkeye, all things Marvel with you. Absolutely. And thank, and congratulations once again to Andrew for, uh, for getting the uh, top prize in the pub quiz. Yes, most definitely. Yes. yes. Thank you so much. 
take care and we'll speak to you again soon. Talk to you next time. Yeah, remember, keep watching, keep listening, and keep defending, as well as trusting a bro. <laughs> Bye. Bye.